Nanach Nachman Achum Yuan Yisrael Saba Perik Blood to Silence. Rabbi Yisrael encourages Hasidim who are chased while trying to distribute the, the, the holy books of Rabbeinu. What you can do for the good of Judaism, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid at all. No, that you should not be afraid of any force in the world. God is with us. Yes, do not be afraid at all. Do not be frightened by the falsehood. Oh, how good and how pleasant, how good it is to suffer humiliation and being abused, shvichas damim, for the sake of the, of the truth. For God, for the Torah, how good it is to pass through this. Rabbeinu speaks in the Kutu Maran in the teaching called to Yeshua. Rabbeinu, say, Rabbeinu says, the main repentance is humiliation and being abused. We need to transform blood to silence. Not to answer to the opposers, only to be silent. Blood to silence. What is blood spilling abuse? Silence. Anach Nachmon Achmon Yuman. All those who merit to draw close to Rabbeinu suffer very much. For all the world hounds them, humiliates them. But this is a great gift. For all that one suffers for the truth is very good. Oh, if only I had known this, how precious are humiliation and abuse. I would have prayed to God to give me more and more and more. When I see what condition I am in, and also my children, I already become confused and I do not know what is with me. All of you do not know what is breastlit. I came close to Rabbeinu approximately 70 years ago and I managed to suffer from this. And what I suffered, the place where I sat in the yeshiva was the root place of the opposers. Major figures, Hasidim, elders, and they were all opposed to me and called me traitor. I was lowly, below the earth, and I suffered what I suffered. What is impossible to relate and impossible to describe. Oy vai, oy vai, what I endured and what I suffered. And at the time I suffered intensely abundant troubles, and I was not at peace with it. But now I see the great value of the torments and the pain that one endures for something of holiness. I'm very happy that I merited <clears throat> to draw close to Rabbeini amidst torrent, torments, amidst torments, amidst great pain and a broken heart. To the contrary, it is very good to come close to the tzaddik amidst suffering. I am delighted with myself for what I suffered. I suffered intense suffering, and thank God I received through this a gift that cannot be described. Now I think, if only I had suffered more and more and more, it would have been better. It would have been better. Thank God. In the time that I passed through what I did, and I did not have bread for my small children and not for me, I also need, eat. I also need to eat. I did not have for me and not for the children, neither clothes, nor shoes, nor bread, nor money, nor anything. And I suffered it all for the truth, for Breslau. I do not know how I survived and how my children survived. It is above nature. I live miraculously. But thank God I am alive. God wants it thus. This is from the greatness of God and His wonders. What are we? What is our life? Who can imagine the greatness of God? Oh, yo, I also endured all varieties of opposition with mockery and lowliness. What I suffered only due to having the name of Breslau. Yisrael bear Breslau. I had several tests. Everyone laughed and ridiculed me a great deal. All the children, big and small, and all the scholars pointed with their fingers. Aha, look, he is Breslau. You see? What does it matter to you? So there is a Breslau, but so what? What do you mean, what does it matter to me? He could take everyone. He could take everyone. There were some who had fear of heaven, and they were, and they were afraid to laugh at me. But there were major rabbis who said, no, no. We need to distance him. We need to cast him out. He learns the books of Breslov all day. You know about this? All the world was angry with me. No one wanted to greet me. When I traveled to Yishalayim, which was the city of, of the Torah, Yishalayim is filled with Torah giants and sages, rabbis, and I came from Tiberia, Tiberius, Tiberia to Yishalayim. It was a major trip. I arrived and no one wanted to greet me. He is Breslov. All of them looked at me with, our, with sour faces. Yisrael Bear came from Tiberia, they thought. Should we greet him or not? What to do? There were those who wanted to greet me, but they were afraid, so they made a compromise. They greeted me quickly, in a whisper and secretly, that no one would see. No one would know that he was greeting Yisrael Bear. He learns the books of Breslau. Who can describe or imagine what it was like in the world? All the world spoke of Breslau. Breslau, Breslau. I did not know of this. Why did they speak so much about Breslau? 
and what I suffered, all of them laughed at me, and I accepted it and said, Good, good, give me more. Such gifts, aha! Thank God I accepted everything with love, with joy. This was all my vitality. All of them were false. I suffered humiliation, but the immense honor was great. My children were in danger. One of my children suffered many years from hunger. He had a headache from the hunger, and in a short time he escaped from this. I saw another one of my sons who needed to eat, and people came to me from the yeshiva in Chadera, and I had two sons. So they said to me that they, that they would accept the two sons, and the children would sleep and eat with them in the yeshiva. But I did not pay heed to this. I wanted my son, I wanted my son to learn in Yerushalayim. Well, those from the yeshiva departed, but I saw that this was hurting my son seriously. He, he did not eat. He was in danger. So I wanted to save him. I said to him, in Chadera, you will have a yeshiva, a dormitory. There is food, drink, and a place to sleep. Perhaps you should go to yeshiva. But I did not have money to pay for the bus ride. What to do? It is not done to travel without money. Without money, one does not travel. And I stood with my son to travel to Chadera. Then people said to me, go to the manager of Egid and tell him to give you a ticket free of charge. So I did thus and succeeded. And the manager of Egid gave me a ticket for free. And I came to my son and he heard and saw this, how I had asked for a ticket free of charge. Then he was broken by it. He came to the yeshiva with such a broken heart. What is this? Where does one see something like this? That I am sitting here and I am alive, I don't understand it. One time on the eve of Shabbos, I did not have money to buy challah, and I needed to go to the mikveh, and I did not have money to buy challah. Then someone, some rabbi, gave me 15 agurot, 15, 15 grushim for challah. So, I went to the mikveh hurriedly and immersed and got dressed and went to buy the challah. And thank God there was challah in the store. All right, the clerk gave me challah worth 15 agurot for 15 grushim. And I put my hand in my pocket to bring out the 15 agarot, and there was no money. I had hung my clothes on a hook outside, and someone took the money, and I did not find the money in my pocket. Well, now it was close to Shabbos, already time to light the Shabbos candles. And how, and how would I have challah for Shabbos, and what would be? What could I do now? What to do? Then I decided, come what may, I would go to the rabbi and explain to him what had happened, even though he could say that I was an, I was an expert deceiver. I said, come what may. Let him think what he will think. I will go to him and explain to him what, ha what happened. I went to him and told him, and he understood from the words that came from my heart. He felt that this was true, that I was not lying. So he immediately brought out 15 agarot and gave it to me. And I went to buy the challah again. There was also a story with Rabbi Moshe Rosenthal. He was a yeshiva student and was not wealthy. And then, several years ago, every coin was a major sum. And I was in the synagogue with him and said to him that I, that I needed bread for my children and, did, and I did not have any to buy it. And I did not have anything to buy it. And he gave me a half a shilling, which is two and a half agarot. He, he brought out the money and gave, it, and gave me for the bread. All right, I put the money in my pocket and I went joyfully to buy the bread, to bring bread to the house. I went to the store and at that time a half a shilling was worth two loaves of bread. Two, kilo, two kilos for two and a half agarot. All right, the salesman gave me the bread, but I put my hand in my pocket, there was nothing. The half shilling had disappeared. So I did not have bread, I could not take bread without money. I had neither money, nor gas, nor anything. There was one opposer who'd collect a charity, and I told him, today is Friday, is Friday, and I don't have fuel or anything for Shabbos. He was poor and his wife was pregnant and she needed urgently to eat and he did not have money or anything but he but he did not leave me his sons had a store so he took he, so he took money from his sons first he gave me money to buy a gas canister that first of all I should have a, a means to cook but he did not have more money than this to give me so thank God I already had a gas canister but food to cook on the canister I did not have I had a relative Moshe Barzol he had a store in the old city and thank God I had enough for Shabbos I saw a great deal of bread in the store, and I did not have a bit of bread, and I did not have a single coin. Well, if there is no money, there is no bread. And also, I would leave the house to travel and would not leave a single coin. I traveled on every, on every occasion to Miron, to the Yishalayim, without a coin, without a bit of bread, without money. And I did not even have water. Thus was my life. By nature, I am bashful. I cannot ask people to have mercy on me, to give me. 
By nature, I'm very bashful, so I suffered and suffered. And thank God, today I am happy. Everyone was amazed at my wife, how she maintained such a life. They thought, even if we, if we had lived with our husband 20 years with 15 children, we would divorce the husband like this, who does not provide an income and has no mercy on the children. My children and I were in danger similar to Rebbe Nachman of Tilchin. He went to Lemberg to buy paper to print Pekite Alochas, and he did not have even and he did not even have the travel fare. He needed to travel and he did not have bread to eat or money to travel. And also his wife and children did not have even bread in the house. And thus he traveled to print Lakite Alochas. Then the wife of Rebbe Nachman of Tulchin went to Rebbe Nachman and told him, Rebbe Nachman went to print the Kutei Lachas and did not leave even one coin for bread. Know that you both will find me and the children dead from hunger in the house. We have nothing to eat. Then Rebbe Nachman sent to Rebbe Yitzchak the letter of Rebbe Nachman of Tulchin's wife, in which she wrote, It is a miracle that we are living from day to day. Rebbe Yitzchak was very wealthy, he had many pockets for this person and that one. He sent money to the rest of the people. Then Rebbe Nachman wrote to him to make another pocket and give money for bread for the wife and children of Rabbi Nachman Tulchina. If not, they would be found dead. Thus was printed the Kite Alachas. Rabbi Nachman Tulchina went to print the Kite Meran and the Kite Alachas, and thank God he succeeded and printed the Kite Alachas in large and elegant print. Such elegance, a quality of paper that is not seen even today. In, Le in Lemberg, there were very high quality printers. They had a beauty that made a commotion throughout the world. I also worked with these printers. They accepted everything. I also worked with these printers. They accepted everything. And he returned from Lemberg and brought the Lakite Alachas to Rabbi Nossin. Such self-sacrifice, such a strength and might. It was above nature, above the whole world. He traveled to print Lakite Alachas and did not leave even a morsel of bread for his wife to eat. Thus he traveled to Lemberg to print Lakite Alachas. Oh, yo, yo, then, in the time that I went through what I did, I did not know what to think of it. It was difficult for me. It is written in the Gemara, one who comes to purify himself, they purify him. So I thought, so why do I have torments like these? I want to serve God in truth. Why do I have torments like these? It was difficult for me. Why? But that was then. Now I see with all the more time that passes, I see and understand and comprehend and recognize that this was such a good beyond limits. Now, even if I were to give millions, I want a bit of persecution, humiliation, troubles. Where are they? Unattainable. Only in that period. There was there, there was what there was, and it was all good. All for the generations to come, to see what his breast live and what force is in it. It was what it was, and it was all good. All for the generations to come, to see what his breast live and what force is in it. Oh, yeah, yo, I am so accustomed to such lowliness and to endure tribulations. I am already used to it, and thank God everything came in its proper time. It was all saved for this time. I needed to receive from Rabbi Yisrael Kaduna, and the only possibility for this was through humiliations and, deg and degradation and the torments I suffered from everyone. And thank God I was strong. Everyone would speak, my family and all the city and all the world. And I was alone against all of them. How was such a thing possible? What I suffered, what I endured, there are no words to describe. As much as I would tell, it is still nothing. As much as I would tell, it is nothing. And also, I drew Shmuel Horvitz to Breslau. He was connected to a certain branch of Hasidim. And then God, I spoke with him about Rabbi Yisrael Kaduna and Rabbeinu. And he drew close immediately. He cast away all the wisdoms and all the challenges, everything. I explained to him what his breasts live and told him of Rabbi Yisrael, of how he rose every night at midnight and went to the fields. I saw this, I saw this with my own eyes. I could, not do, I, could, I could not do such a thing. I fell. But Rabbi Yisrael was a strong man of might. He stood with great determination before God. He summoned his strength like a lion, rose up in the morning, in the night, so that he would arouse the dawn. Shmuel's mother and father cried profusely about him becoming Breslev. His father wrote to his mother telling her to do everything she could to prevent Shmuel from being Breslev. And his mother was as if she had passed away from the, intense, from the intensity of the anguish. And she would cry, Oh, if I, my son became Breslev. Why must you do like that? Why specifically Breslev? Another branch of Hasidim will not do. And his father wrote to him, Idiot! They were truly holy people from the family of the Holy Shlach. 
and his father was a major rabbi in, rabbi in America, a great and very famous rabbi. He was a great thinker. He was opposed to Breslau. And he asked Shmuel, have mercy on yourself and don't be Breslau. And Shmuel was strong as iron. He was strong and stood his ground and said to his father, I am only Breslau. His father was very important to Rabbi Cook, to Rabbi Cook. And he asked Rabbi Cook to make efforts with all his might to extract Shmuel from Breslau. And Rabbi Cook answered him, Why are you crying? It is not so bad. Let him be Breslau. His father cried so much before Rabbi Cook to use strategies to distance his son Shmuel from Breslau. And Rabbi Cook saw that he was in much danger. He could die from the intensity of the pain. <clears throat> from the greatness of the anguish. So Rabbi Cook wrote him a letter not to worry. Let him be Breslau. Do not worry about him. You will receive much satisfaction. He has good children. You will receive much satisfaction. He has good children. Rabbi Cook received me and told me there is only breast love in the world. Shmuel was engaged in Yushalayim with a match of the highest lineage and the most beautiful. In Yushalayim lived the Torah master Wellenstein from Hungary. He was a major rabbi, a major Torah scholar, and his family accepted Shmuel as a son-in-law. They gave him a daughter from their family and Rabbi Wellenstein was astounded by Shmuel. It was good that Rabbi Shmuel Horowitz had written the book Yemei Shmuel that we could have some trace of an impression of him. That we could have some trace of an impression of him. Shmuel and I are one. We merited to draw close to Rabbeinu in a time when the world, all of Yishalayim, were opposed. It is a great miracle that we remained with Rabbeinu. All of the land of Yisrael, of Eretz Yisrael, was opposed to Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu sent to his, said to his people, I brought you a gift from the land of Israel. What was the gift? Controversy. You are not considered as my people. There will be a time when all the world will oppose me. And then, one who stands with me, he will be one of my people. But you are not. Rebbeinu said, Give me boards and stones. Boards, uh, lime, and stones. And I will build awesome buildings. It is very good to forge valuable tools. It is very good to forge valuable tools. From controversy is created tools. Stones and mortar, and I will build. Rabbi Nelson was in danger every day and every moment. They handed him over to the authorities, and he sat in prison. And in every place where he traveled and went, he was in danger. They wanted to kill him. There was once, there was one rich man who was opposed to Breslau. Then the, then the opposers gave money to the police to ensure that Rabbi Nelson would not live in Breslau, that he would go away from Breslau. But Rabbi Nelson had students in Breslau, so he came sometimes secretly to the city. So they came to the rich man and told him, Do you know, Rabbi Nelson is supposed to come tonight to Breslau. The rich man said, Don't worry, I promise you, as long as I live, he won't be in Breslau. Then he died. He did not live through that night. He died by the judge. A funeral was held for him that night. Yes. Thus he said, Don't worry, as long as I live, he won't be in Breslau. So he fell and, so he fell and died. He died. Rabbi Nelson dreamed about Rabbeinu and, Mo and about Moshe Rabbeinu during the time of the controversy. And the controversy was very intense. Every moment that he remained alive was a miracle. Then he said to Rabbeinu in the dream, I cannot endure it. Then Rabbeinu said to him, but you did good. Why are you crying so much? You did good. You made the kute lachas. So what do you want? Then Moshe Rabbeinu said to Rabbeinu, why did you tell him you did good? Very good. So we see, why did you tell him you did good? Very good. So we see that now all the world knows that there was such a Rebbe and student. Whoever heard of such a thing? A Jewish man goes to make a wedding for his son, and they receive him with stones to kill him. Who heard of such a thing? On Friday, Rebbe Nassim traveled with his son, son Yitzchak to bring him under the wedding canopy. Then the opposers gathered with all the city and went out of the city to greet Rebbe Nassim and the groom. To receive, them, to receive them with large stones, stones meant to kill, to destroy. Rabbi Nassim and Rabbi Yitzchak, the groom, were in great danger. The opposers threw stones at them, and they were such big stones, they all fled to the forest. Until God had mercy, and the opposers threw all their stones, and had no stones left. In the meantime, each one fled and looked for a place to save himself, until it became somewhat quiet, and then they began to search for Rabbi Nassim, and could not find him. Oh, Rabbi Nassim is gone! Where is Rabbi Nassim? Where is Rabbi Nassim? They did not know where he was. They went to look for him and found him dancing. Very joyfully, with such a dance and such a melody, such arousal. 
he escapes to some distant he escaped to some distant forest and there he did his bodhidis and started to sing before God about this and said with a great force the Messiah the Mashiach will reveal our greatness and glory and said with a great force the Mashiach will reveal our greatness and glory Rabbi Nassim told God not to worry at all the Mashiach would reveal everything we have someone we can depend on yes the righteous Mashiach will reveal that this is something new that had not been since the creation of the world there was never something like this Lakita Etfiles, Lakita Alachas, Lakita Maran, Sapir Masias. Hanach Nachmon Nachmon Yuman. He encouraged, he encouraged and cheered himself. It was a melody and a dance together. It used the melody of Eishes Chayil. Such a melody. This is a melody that came from Rabbeinu. They will come from all over the world to hear the melody of Rabbeinu. When he will reveal what is breastlit, he will complete this melody, and afterwards everyone will sing it. The Mashiach will reveal our greatness and glory. So, we need to sing. Rabbi Nassim made this melody in the forest out of the stones. And now we are singing this song. Rabbi Nassim made this melody in the forest out of the stones. And now we are singing the song. The stones made such a beautiful melody. Without stones, what quality would the melody have? Only with stones. The stones made many beautiful melodies like these. For us, that are beyond measure, these stones guard us in, ev in each and every generation. All that the stones were larger, the melody was more beautiful. If the stone was larger, the melody needed to be more beautiful. They threw stones to kill and destroy. Then he sang, the Mashiach will reveal our greatness and glory. He will reveal who we are, breasts of Hasidim, people of truth. There were breasts of people of truth who were in great danger. They wanted to kill them. They threw stones at them and there were those who were hit in the head, and there was great danger. Large stones like this, and all of them came out in peace. There was no damage. There was one who went with a hat that covered his head, but he showed me that he had had experienced the miracle. They threw a stone at him, and the stone entered his head deep, 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 and he grasped his, my finger, and he grasped my finger and showed me. See the hole? It was a miracle that he remained alive. The stone entered deep into his head. Now they throw stones, but when the righteous now they throw stones. Now they throw stones, but when the righteous Mashiach will come, then they will see our greatness and our glory. Oh, there will be a time when the Mashiach will come. He will reveal Rabbeinu. The Mashiach will reveal our greatness and our glory. Who will who will reveal? Only the Mashiach. He will reveal. Who will reveal? Only the Mashiach. He will reveal. There was a famous and great Lithuanian rabbi. He drew close to Rabbeinu, and he had brothers who were rabbis, and they said to him that he was crazy. Rabbeinu said to his people, Honor, I already took it from you. You will not be honored. If they will give praise to me, or to another breast of chassid, then they will say, What are you saying? He's breast of, how can you praise him? Everyone also was jealous of me, everyone. They all feared to touch a breast of book, all the more to learn from one. They saw my might. They did not understand from where I drew such might. The simple one, the Tom, was always joyful, and the wise one, the Chacham, was always depressed. This is not alright, and this is not alright. This is not good, and this is not good. And the simple one made good out of everything. He wanted to eat meat, so he said to his wife, Give me meat. And she gave him bread without meat. Then he said, Oh, the meat is so good. Such, t such tasty meat. He needed a suit to go to the wedding of a friend, so he said to his wife, Give me the beautiful suit. I need to go to a wedding. So she gave him the pelts, a fur coat, harp, harpy, a fur coat, harpy, winter coat, megushum, very thick, very physical. The wise one learned all sorts of disciplines, that of a doctor, the diamond trade, but not a shoemaker. And the simple one did not succeed with any work, only that of a shoemaker. And when he finished the shoe, it had three corners. Then he would take the shoe and say, how beautiful is this shoe? How sweet and how beautiful the shoe? How much like honey and sugar is this shoe? The shoe had three corners. I never in my life heard of such a thing. A shoe with three corners? Have you seen a person with shoes that have three corners? Only in the story of the simple one. In the story of the simple one, there was a shoe with three corners. The simple one asked the wise one, why is it that I am joyful and every time I come, you are depressed? Then the wise one answered, how can I not be depressed? 
One rich man brought me a diamond and another diamond, asking me to make the second diamond like the one he had brought as an example. And the wise one was a great ex expert. He had the diamond, he made the diamond good and very beautiful. Then the, right, then the rich man came, oh, the diamond is so beautiful. But the wise one had made some flaw, some detail not in place, but nobody knew of it. No one could understand the flaw aside from himself. Then he said to himself, how can I rejoice? A wise man like me could have, could have such a mishap, could make such a mistake so that the work would not be all right. So how can I rejoice? The story of the wise the story of the wise one and the simple one. With such a story, the whole world can live and rejoice. A story like this can give joy to all the world. The simple one was appointed to be minister over all the ministers. The simple one, the world to come. The taste of the Garden of Eden. Oy, oy, what will be in the world? What joy, it will be a world filled with joy. There will not be any sadness in the world, only joy. In the Petik it is written that the Mashiach will come and the whole world will be joyous. Everyone will be simple ones. Now it's brought in the Sefer introductory, introductory page of the Kutei Lachas that was published with self-sacrifice by the Nachman of Tilchin in the year 1860. Saba said, the Nachman of Tilchin traveled to print the Kutei Lachas and did not leave his wife even a morsel of bread to eat. Such self-sacrifice, such might, this is above nature. Nanach, Nachmo, Nachmo, Yuma. Above nature. Chapter above nature. Rabbi Yisrael and his followers sing joyfully from the phrases of encouragement of Rabbeinu. All the world in its entirety in its entirety is a very narrow bridge. A very narrow bridge. And the main point is not to be afraid. Is not to be afraid. I sacrifice I sacrifice myself to be with Rabbi Yisrael Kaduna. For I was on the way to the grave. I did not leave him for a single step. Wherever he went, to Tiberia, to Miron, we went together. This was a matter for discussion among people. Here are the breast livers. Here is Yisrael Bear with Rabbi Yisrael Kaduna. This, is a, this was a sign that we were together. This was the, 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 the Gishpanka, the signature, signet on breast lift. Rabbi Yisrael was such a man of might that he stood against all the Torah leaders and against all the world. He had such wisdom, the wisdom of Rabbeinu. One spark against all the world. One spark can conquer the whole world. One spark. I am a completely simple person. I merited by the grace of God to know what is a breast of chassid, Rabbi Yisrael Kaduna. Rabbi Yisrael in every place, in Sfas, in Tiveria, throughout the world, he had a different name. He had four names. His family name was Halperin, but his nickname was Karduna after the city of Kardun in Galicia. And also in Uman, they called him Chek, Chak. Chak. Why Chak? Chak means joyful. A joy that rises above all the joys. Chak means joyful. A joy that rises above all the joys. He had such great joy, so they called him Rabbi Yisrael Chak. He would always dance and was always joyful. He also suffered great pain and great torments from drawing close to Rabbeinu. For then the whole world was opposed. For then the whole world was opposed. Through the kindness of God and His wonders I merited, I give thanks to God for His great kindness that I merited to know Rabbi Yisrael in a time when everyone who was opposed. In a time when everyone was opposed. You do not know how it was. 
Thank God I stood and fought against everyone, such leaders, such famous figures, and thank God I was very strong. Rabbi Yisrael came to the land of Yisrael, of Israel, and lived in Yerushalayim for a year. And in the second year he came to Meron, to Tzfas. He was also in Hebron for a year. And afterwards, and afterwards he came to me, and I merited to see him and to see such wonders that are impossible to describe in words. Oh, his dancing, his singing, his joyfulness, his prayers, his service of God. His dancing, his singing, his joyfulness, his prayers, his service of God, faith with such awesome power. Who can describe or relate what I saw, what I felt? One who did not see such a thing, never saw good in all his life. He could have been in Moron, and I in Tiberia, and neither would have known the other. But God wanted there to be a connection between us. So he brought about events, and he infused the light in Rabbi Yisrael, that he would know what this was. And he infused the light in Rabbi Yisrael, that he would know what this was. And he brought him to my house, and what created from this was created. And what created from this was created. It created another world. We see now that the connection that was between Rabbi Yisrael and I, it was a preparation for the present. All that I suffered was for the redemption. All that I suffered was for the redemption. And also the Petik was also among the wondrous things that is impossible to accept, impossible to understand. And it was all Rabbi Yisrael. Without Rabbi Yisrael, there would not have been a Yisrael bear, would not have been a Petik, would not have been a 17th of Thomas. What I saw, what is the force of Rabbeinu Rabbi Nachman that can make from flesh and blood, from a man born from the body of a woman, and he is a person like all people, like all the world, can bring him to such holiness. It is above nature. He was a different matter. He was in this world, but he was not from this world. He was from the world to come. I saw Rabbi Yisrael, I saw what is breastlet. Just to hear his voice, the voice was sweet and was always attached to God, especially when he was involved in Torah and prayer. I'd never seen or heard something like this in all my life. It was for this that I draw close. It was for this that I drew close. God brought about events for me, miracles, all miracles. We are speaking spiritual words. It is impossible to explain as it was, all spiritual, all soul, all truth. And also, he had much self-sacrifice for many Jewish, Jewish souls, and he drew them close to God with true self-sacrifice. One time he was in prison and suffered such torments, and also for me, he suffered such torments. Oh, what Rabbi Yisrael suffered for me. If they would give a person all the money in the world and all the possessions in the world to endure just one day of what Rabbi Yisrael endured, he would, abandon, he would abandon it all and say, I don't want money, and I don't want torments like these. Oh, Rabbi Yisrael, Rabbi Yisrael, he had self-sacrifice, as if he did not have a wife or children, only me, he and I, only two people. He sacrificed himself for me. What, one man, Yisrael Bear? What will come of this? Will redemption come from this? For what did he suffer so much? He thought that perhaps he would succeed in infusing, he thought that perhaps he would, he would succeed in infusing in me some light, a bit of light, that I would fulfill the Torah and serve God, perhaps. For this, he gave all his soul and everything. And he saw this, how God brought things about. God brought him from Miron to Tiberia by force. And he found his soul bare, then he left his family, Tzvas, Miron, as if he had no wife or children and, and, no, in and no income, nothing. He left everything for me. He spent the whole winter in a synagogue and slept on a bench and was cold. And what did he eat? Bread and tea, bread with water. He only found in Tiberia Yisrael Bear. Then he gave all his soul. He had only one thing, Yisrael Bear. Oy, 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 the Holy Ardi had holy students, Torah giants and masters of Kabbalah. And he warned them severely about love for friends. And also Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechoi warned his followers, followers to hold themselves together in great love. And Rabbeinu, he and his holy student, Rabbi Nassim, they speak so much about love of, of friends. And likewise, we, we need to guard ourselves carefully, that our love will not be blemished, God forbid, even as much as a hair's breadth. For it is fitting for us to love ourselves to the utmost degree, because we merited to have some part in the publicizing and the revelation of the light of the true tzaddik in the world, upon which is dependent the rectification of the world in full. We need to guard vigilantly against corruption of our love and from division of our hearts, God forbid, only to strive, only to strive to add, to add on and increase love and unity 
and unity for each other as one body, so that we will be able to bond and join together at all times, so that through us the wondrous houses of the tzaddik will grow and increase very greatly beyond limit, until all of, Yis until all of Yisrael will gather and flock together to enter into them. And even those lying outside, and even the nations of the world, will gather and enter the holy buildings of the true tzaddik. It is also fitting for us to yearn to meet. It is also fitting for us to yearn to meet. The matter of Babani is the Rebbe and the students. All the followers, great and small, there are no great ones and no small ones. We are all friends. Well, thank God there is love between us. But there is love and there is love. I saw what is love. Rabbi Yisro Kaduna, may he rest in peace, he gave all his soul for me. Perhaps he would inspire in me some light to clean myself from the cravings of this world. That is the main point, to clean ourselves from the, craving, from the cravings of this world. That is the primary way to draw close to God. And he was very impressed with me. He saw that I, that I was a small man. I was nothing, but he saw my might, that I stood against such powers, and I was strong and joyful. Then he saw that this was a good thing. And from where did I draw such might? Prayer, 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 and goodwill. And from where did I, did I draw such might? Prayer, 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 and goodwill. Then in Tiberia there were two crazy people. Rabbi Yisrael Kaduna and Yisrael Ber, too. And we danced on the Shabbos nights, such dancing, with such joy, and everyone was opposed. And we danced until all the ozers annulled themselves and fell. What is this? From where did they receive such joy? From where did they receive something like this? Whoever heard of such a thing? Where is there such a thing in the world? Where does one see such self-sacrifice for a child that is not one's own? Such a thing had never been and is not seen from any sadiq, from any man. One sees this only with Rabbeini. And what was accomplished was accomplished. A building was built for all generations, forever, for eternity. Ishin, a creation of the world from nothing. A creation of the world from nothing. And the petik came suddenly, without preparation, Nothing. There was the story of the 17th of Thomas, as it is written in the Petik. And the sign is on the 17th of Thomas. I cannot describe. I was in a very pathetic state. Misukan. Dangerous place. Dangerous place. I was depressed to the point of being mentally ill. I fell into such sadness, such broken heartedness, without healing. There was no healing for this. Nothing. So, from this was created the Petik. Rubani says in Sefer Amidas, one who commits a sin and is ashamed from it, he is forgiven for all his sins. So the torment and the shame and the depression I suffered from this, so the torment and the shame and the depression I suffered from this, it brought atonement. Thus says Rabbeinu, thus it is written in Sefer Amidus. So it is no surprise that he speaks to me in this language, my precious student, and about you I said, he descends. Very hard was it for me to descend to you. He descends even to Yisrael Ber. My precious student, and about you I said, I had such anguish, and, I, and, and also I could not be arrogant. I could not, for I had come to know my worth. And also Rabbi Yisrael, may he rest in peace, knew me. He understood me. He knew that I was nothing. And even so, he saw my desires and that I was standing against all the sages, against all the Torah leaders. Oh, then that was more valuable to him than, every, than everyone else. And he accepted me like a gift. And with all his heart, with all his soul, the world thinks, what? What is self-sacrifice? What? Is self-sacrifice something profitable? One needs to be a scholar, successful. And in this, Rabbi Yisrael was unique. Another man would not have had such, an, such a connection with me. Even Avrom, Avrom Baram Nachman, if I had drawn close to him, he would have spoken to me, but not in a manner like this, like Rabbi Yisrael, with whom I had such a bond. Rabbi Yisrael, all his weeping was only for the people, people of Yisrael. What will be? He felt the intensity of the pain, the downfalls, the heresy and the, Iran, and the Iranian's beliefs and the falsehood. It is worse than all the torments in the world. And he gave his soul to God. He prayed about this, that God should have mercy and reveal the knowledge of Rabbeinu in the world. Everything is dependent on Rabbeinu. Everything. All the Torah and faith. All our lives in this world and the world to come, is, it is only Rabbeinu. Every word of Rabbeinu includes a massive degree of wisdom and knowledge and encouragement and vitality. Of wisdom and knowledge and encouragement and vitality. And also through Rabbeinu, 
we see the light of the Gemara and of all the Torah. There is the Kabbalah and everything within the Kuti Alachas. Kuti Alachas is the bridge between the Kabbalah and every religious law. It illuminates the Gemara and all the Torah for us. The Torah, the Torah, the Torah world should have been fully established in learning the Kuti Alachas. All the scholars and all the Torah world, for one sees in this such amazing wonders. How Rabbi Nassim learned the Gemara, how he learned the Medrash, and the world does not know of this. They think, why do I need Lakita Alachas? Why do I need ideas from Hasidim, ideas from Kabbalah? The world does not know that Rabbeini is such a secret, such a wonder. Even one of the famous leaders of Breslov, Hasidim, he says that he's a breast of Chassid, but he thinks a breast of Chassid needs to be a scholar, the Mara, the codifiers, the Halachas, but the Kutei Halachas, but the Kutei, but, but the Kutei Tfilis, the Kutei Maran, the Kutei Halachas, that is not scholarly, that is not scholarly, that is Chassidus, that is Chassidus, that, that is Chassidism, that is Chassidism. There are those who say that, God forbid, we are making idolatry out of Rabbeinu. But what Rabbeini says, what Rabbeini revealed, he revealed only a drop from the sea of his greatness. Nothing. It is hidden. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. fortunate are the ears that hear words like these. There is nothing like them in the world. There cannot be found in the world words like these, which I received through self-sacrifice from Rabbeini, from Rabbi Yisrael, and from all the elderly Breslau people, people of truth. Not like today. People are simply chasing after honor and money. This is darkness. Yes, I do not tend to imply that I am extraordinary. To the contrary, my intent is the truth, that I am at such a level that I am ashamed even to speak. And Rabbeinu does, does, and Rabbeinu does as it is written in Halil, from the filth he raises the impoverished. Impoverished means impoverished from Torah, from good deeds, from everything. He raises the poor from the dust, raises from the dust. There is nothing lower than dust. Sadness is referred to as dust. Dust is sadness, apathy. He raises the poor from the dust. Poor is someone who really has nothing. Poor. And more and, and more. From the filth, he raises the impoverished. Apparently, impoverished is more severe than lowly. From the filth, he raises the impoverished. Well, it was hard for me to accept my precious student and also about you in the time that I found the Petit. There were elders in Yerushalayim, Rabbi Shlomo Vexler, Rabbi Naftuli Kayim, and Rabbi Nassim, the son of Rabbi Pinchas Yishiyah, who took Gitalif for a wife, who took Gitalif for a wife after the passing of Rabbi Yisrael. He was a true breast lover, not a shallow breast lover. There were elders, yes. And I showed Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Vexler the petik. I can see it clearly as now. We were with Rabbi Naftali. And we sat next to each other by the bookcase. And there was a considerable distance between us. I was nothing. Rabbi Shlomo Vexler was a great thinker with much strength. He was a holy man. I ate with him. I saw how he ate in such holiness, not in a common manner the way we eat. He was a different man. It was amazing to me. How does he live? How can he be in this world? How does he exist? I heard words from Rabbi Shloimoy and I saw wonders from the words of Rabbi Shloimoy that he himself did not know. But even so, he had a German nature. He was from there. And there, they have a tendency to stubbornness. They are stubborn in their opinions and it is impossible to change them. In any case, even one from Germany can err. He did not travel to Rabbeinu. He could have traveled, he had money, but he was a learned scholar. He was versed in all the branches of the Torah, and he had reached a steadfast ruling, a Torah ruling, that it was forbidden to leave the land of Israel. True, it is forbidden to leave Israel, but there are exceptions. It is written explicitly that if one has an exceptional Rebbe outside of Israel, he is allowed to leave Israel. But I was together with him, and I knew that he had this shortcoming but it was impossible to extricate him from this. So, I did not argue with him. I sat together with him and received his screaming. And what I understood was not correct. That I did not need to accept. I did not accept. It had no value to me. And what I understood was not correct. That I did not need to accept. I did not accept. It had no value to me. And in the Petik, one sees such encouragement. Rabbeini relates to us similarly to God. There is a verse, I dwell with the lowly. One who is dispersed, one is one who is depressed to the point of dako, crushed. Then I dwell unto the depths, lowly. I, I, I dwell into the depths, the lowly, the, 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 the crushed. 
and Rabbi Nassan was with Rabbeinu in utter annulment. Rabbi Nassan saw the light of Rabbeinu, the holiness of Rabbeinu, so he was in such humility. He thought of himself as nothing, for it is impossible to be without Rabbeinu. He saw the greatness of Rabbeinu, so he annulled himself entirely. Rabbi Nassan had no thought of prestige, of arrogance. He could have thought, I am the student of Rabbeinu. I merit to hear teachings like these, stories like these. No, he was nothing and nobody. No, he was nothing and nobody. He understood that he was totally far from God in comparison to Rabbeinu. He understood that he was totally far from God in comparison to Rabbeinu. He was humble. He was humble. That, that is greatness. That is great wisdom. A person like this could be nothing? How? It is beyond nature. This is what Rabbeinu inspired in him. Rabbeinu needed such a vessel. I dwell with the lowly. Who would be nullified? Who would be nullified to him? If not, how would it be possible to receive from Rabbeinu? Who would be nullified to him? If not, how would it be possible to receive from Rabbeinu? Oh, Rabbi Nassim was a genius. But I am nothing. I am truly non-existent. Truly nothing. One Chassid tells Rabbi Yisrael that every Saturday night he holds a class in the Kutumaran. Thank God that I merit just to hear this, what this is. This is really the redemption. This is all our vitality and all the salvations. To merit to hear Lekutim Aran, what this is, what this is. What a salvation it is. What a healing. What dot dot dot. It is all, it is all our rectification. That is all. There is in it all the fear of heaven and faith and repentance and all that we need in each and every word. Such a thing was never before in the world. Now a wonder has been revealed to us. Such an awesome wonder which is all our vitality and all our salvation. Everything, everything we need. Thank God. God gave us Lakuta Maran. Rabbeinu is very happy that there is a Lakut, that there is Lakuta Maran in the world. Rabbeinu is very happy that there is Lakuta Maran in the world. Every teaching is all our vitality and that of our descendants, everything. Lesson 30 of Lakut Maran says, all that a person is more seriously ill, he needs, a greater doc he needs a greater doctor. And we are so ill, there is no one who can help us, only Rabbeinu. All the matter of Rabbeinu is the matter of the, all the matter of Rabbeinu is the matter of, redem is the matter of the redemption. It is a matter that is above nature, such a wondrous matter that is nowhere else in the world. One sees the greatness of God, the greatness of the Creator, and the greatness of the Tzaddik. All the matter of Rabbeinu is above everything, every word that Rabbeinu revealed, even what already exists, like the Gemara. But now, there is that which came from his mouth, his teachings, the world does not know. They have respect for Noemi Mimelech, Kedishas Levi, for Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Bardicha. They think, what? Is this greater than Kedishas Levi? Yes, the world does not know, they think. So there is one more book, the Kita Maran, also. Like there is Kedishas Levi and Noemi Mimelech, similarly there is the Kita Maran. But the matter of Rabbeini is something else entirely, something special. Rabbeini said, I am a secret from all the world. The Holy Ari also did not know about Rabbeini. This is such an amazing matter, like nothing that ever was in the world, totally new. And also we see his teachings, Lakita Meran and Sapita Masius. Is there anything else in the world like this? Are there other teaching like, teachings like these? Nothing in the world. I heard from Torah Masters. Nothing in the world. I heard from Torah Masters, leaders, who said to their yeshivas, Teachings like Rabbeini, no others like them. Stories like those of Rabbeini, no others like them. Discourses like those of Rabbeini, no others like them. So, and Rabbeini said, the Mashiach will give an, it will give an interpretation of the Kitim Aram. No tzaddik ever said such a thing. There was the Rebbe from Baditchev, a holy master and a tzaddik. And he did not say that the Mashiach would give an interpretation of his book. Only the Rabbeini said this. There is no one to give an interpretation. Only the Mashiach. And even Rabbeinu praised him. The Rabbi of Berdichev. But if the Rabbi of Berdichev had known of Rabbeinu, he would have been like Rabbi Nassim, a student of Rabbeinu in the utmost annulment. And even the people of Rabbeinu that had been such holy tzaddikim, and when they drew close to Rabbeinu, and Rabbeinu brought them outside of the settlement, it was such a wonder. And also, there were such prayer leaders with Rabbeinu, such masters of prayer. Each one had a great light. 
that was not to be found in the world. It was not for nothing that the world was against Breslov. And also, it is impossible to enter the court of the king stuffed with arrogance. One needs to cleanse oneself from this. You want to learn the Kitab Maran? For what? If you want it for prestige and fame, then you do not belong here. You want to learn the Kitab Maran? For what? If you want it for prestige and fame, then you do not belong here. What this is, what this is, even the breast of Hasidim did not all understand. Did they understand what Rabbi Nassim understood? Rabbi Nassim knew about Rabbi Nassim. Saw, Rabbi Nassim said that in the world to come, if they would decree hell for, hell for him, if they would decree hell for him, he would give over a teaching from the Kitab Maran, and it would be transformed to paradise. There's already a healing. There's already the Kitab Maran. There are, there are already the books of Rabbeinu. He finished everything. But there are hidden spiritual, ma spiritual matters. There are, wonders, ma there are wondrous matters hidden from the world. This is the matter of Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu deals with each and every one. He guides him according to the guidance he needs. Each and every one, every soul that draws close, endures what he endures, spiritually and physically, but he endures. Rabbeinu said, when the Mashiach comes, there will be many stories of the wonders of Breslev, how Breslev was in the world. Thus said Rabbeinu, when the Mashiach comes, there will be many stories from the Breslev Hasidim to be told to the world. Rabbeinu speaks of this in the Kitab Maran. He interprets the verse from the book of Dvarim. These are the words that Moshe said to all of Israel. And every word of the Tzaddik, he says one word, and you receive what you need. In the word of the Tzaddik there is everything, all that each one needs, in one word. These are the words that Moshe said to all of Israel, the words that Moshe spoke to all of Israel. Each one draws out what he needs. Yes, each soul that merits to come close to Rabbeinu, it is a miracle. God brings it about that there are souls which draw close to Rabbeinu, but not every soul merits. Even in the time of Rabbeinu, not all of the souls were holy tzaddikim. But each one is a world unto himself, and Rabbeinu in his teachings instills in each one's heart what he needs for his ultimate purpose to know God. Every person has a unique situation, and the tzaddik, the true leader, he knows that this person needs to be led in one manner, and another person needs to be led in another manner. Not everyone has the same treatment just because they are breastless. Rabbeinu said, to draw close to me is very difficult. There is a question, why must the work be so hard? I want to draw close. Why must it be hard? Why must I suffer? No, Rabbeinu said, I like fried, I like fried Hasidim. He likes them fried. It has a good taste, fried. Fried Hasidim, they endure various descents and various tribulations and various torments. And he endures it all and he wants help. And he endures it all and he wants help. And Rabbeinu highly praised these Hasidim who want more, who delight in the holiness, in Torah. The main thing is the heart, to yearn for the Torah, to serve God. God arranged for me to be extremely fried. My father and mother and all the world, I was very fried. And I did not know what, and I did not know what was this. Did not know why. And I did not know what was this. Did not know why. If I had known then what I see now, I would have asked for more. The matter of Rabbeinu is a very awesome matter. I merited, I merited to be with Rabbi Yisrael for close to five years every day. That is not a month and not a year, but one can live 70 years and it is worth nothing. The vital point is the self-sacrifice, the faith, the will, the suffering that I suffered for this. That is the essence of everything. The vital point is the self-sacrifice, the faith, the will, the suffering that I suffered for this. That is the, that is the essence of everything. I remember what I suffered from my family. What we suffered only for the name, Breslev. And thank God, the fact that I am alive now, that I exist in the world, one sees from this that there is something beyond nature. It is impossible to understand what I endured. It is a wonder, a wonder. And how I held my ground with Rabbi Yisrael for years. There's a verse in the, in the Tanakh, only af, af and anger, just my wisdom stood for me. Only af, my wisdom stood for me. Thus it is written in the verse. It means 
this, the Torah that you study ba'af, that you learn in anger and in harshness, in harshness, that's the wisdom that stands for you. Thus it is written in the verse, we believe that there are secrets in the Torah, but we do not know anything. And the Gemara speaks about this verse and it illuminates our vision of the Torah. It clarifies the Gemara, the Holy Siddiquim of the Gemara, the Tanoim and the Amaroim, they found an interpretation of this verse. Only my wisdom stood for me, the Torah of only, af, my nose, the anger, the, the nose for which we suffer, this, the, of only for which we, the, the nose for which we suffer, this stood for me, this lasts forever. Through this, one can make a stand with prayer to hold one's ground. Through this, one can make a stand with prayer to hold one's ground. That is the main point. The Torah of Af, only the nose of self-sacrifice that one suffers. And what I suffered, it was a one-time experience. Oh, I do not know by what merit, but I passed through such places, such a life in which I suffered such lowliness, such humiliations and such ordeals. And now I see with, with, with hindsight that this was all for good and there is nothing better than this. It is not often that such a phenomenon comes to be, like that of Yisroel Bear and Rabbi Yisroel Karduna. We had a bond not dependent on anything, not on money, to the contrary. I suffered for this, and I thought that I would not hold my ground, and I did not want to live. God forbid. I thought, what is this? Who knows, who knows what, will, what will become of me? I will go insane. I thought, what is this? Who knows what will become of me? I will go insane. What, without my father and mother? without family, but when I heard Rabbi Yisrael pray, oh, but when I heard Rabbi Yisrael pray, when I saw, heard some word from Rabbi Yisrael, and saw some deed, I saw such deeds that the mind cannot accept, above nature, I was alone with Rabbi Yisrael, and Rabbi Yisrael laughed at everyone. So, thank God we see that this bond between Rabbi Yisrael and I and I has enduring force. Even though some years passed, the bond endured. The time passed with this matter of self-sacrifice, it endures. It has such impact on our, our hearts. It has such impact on our hearts. Only that it be in truth. Someone who truly wants help. And also, there is something in the air in the world. There is a sort of feeling and goes and arouses and comes to some person and grabs him. Why are you running? What's the big deal? What? And also there's something in the air in the world. There's a sort of feeling. And it goes and arouses and comes to the person and grabs him. Why are you running? What's the big deal? What? And also Rabbeini acts even in hidden ways of which we are not aware. He is already present in the world, Lakita Miran, and all that he revealed. And the main point is that Rabbeini himself is in the world. He is here already. He is here already. The truth triumphs over everything. O oh, Master of the world, we should merit to see the light of Rabbeini, the light of all the Torah, of all repentance, of all the redemption, of every member of Israel. There are such words in Chaim Aran, there are such words in Chaim Aran, but we do, but we do not feel them. The world is so materialist. Even the Torah leaders, even the Torah masters do not feel what there is in this. Each one according to his self-sacrifice, self each one according to his self-sacrifice, according to what he suffers, dot, dot, dot. This is a various wondrous thing. This is a very wondrous thing. Rabbeinu said, anyone who has some contemplation of repentance it comes from me, anyone who has some contemplation of repentance, it comes from me. Thus Rabbeinu said, so all the arousal of the present, we see many Baalei Tshuva, many people who are repenting. This is a sign of the redemption, for all the world is being drawn to Rabbeinu, even if they do not know from where. This is in the person, but this force of Rabbeinu is present in the world, and it acts, and it does not let us rest. Oy, oy, the world does not know this. They do not know and they do not know. They do not know and, and they do not know. Rabbeinu is already present in the world. And if he is already present in the world, then there is a head of the house for the world. Only that they do not know this. Thus everything is vanity, but it is there. 
Thus, everything is vanity, but it is there. There is already a head of the house for the world. The time will come when the truth will be revealed. The time of the wedding. To everything there comes an end. The end will come. The time will come. The time of the wedding. Then the wedding will take place. We do not understand at all. If not for the controversy about... If not for the controversy around the Baal Shem Tov, the Baal Shem Tov was such a sadiq, but Rabbeini is a unique matter. The world does not know of this. Even Brest of Chassidim, Rabbeini said, I am a secret from all the world. Only Rabbi Nassim knows of me, and Naftali a bit. Thus we, can, thus we can make two simple statements about this. Only Rabbi Nassim, only Rabbi Nassim knows of me, Rabbi Nassim knew a bit. Rabbi Nassim knew a bit. Who can know of Rabbeinu? Rabbi Nassim knew a bit. Thus the interpretation is as follows. Only Rabbi Nassim knows of me and Naftali, both of them, in other words, it's me saying this. Who can know, of, who can know, uh, only Rabbi Nassim knows of me and Naftali, a bit. Rabbeinu does not, does not say Rabbi Naftali. Rabbeinu does not say Rabbi Naftali. He says Naftali. So Nassim knows and, and Rabbi Naftali knows a bit. The Rebbeinu does not say Rabbi Naftali, he says Naftali. So Nasa knows and Rabbi Naftali knows a bit. It is possible to interpret it thus. And one can say that a bit refers to both of them. I need to see this inside, but I, I saw it inside and, and Saba says two things. One, we can say only Rabbi, Na, only Rabbi Nasan knows me and Naftali a bit, meaning that Rabbi Nasan knows me, he knows him. He knows the Rebbe, but Naftali knows him a bit. It doesn't seem to be translating it right, forgive me. But uh, that Reb Nassim knows, that uh, again the same statement is, only Rebbe Nassim knows of me. It means Reb Nassim knows of the Rebbe, and Naftali knows a bit. Or, and one can say that a bit refers to both of them. Only Nassim and Naftali, both of them know a bit. Either that Reb Nassim knows and Naftali a bit, or that Nasan and Naftali know a bit. And both of the interpretations are true, says the Sabo. Not only one. And Rabbi Nasan, what Rabbi Nasan knew, Rabbi Naftali did not know. And Rabbi Nasan, what Rabbi Nasan knew, Rabbi Naftali did not know, did not attain. Rabbi Nasan was Yeshua. Rabbeini and Rabbi Nasan were Moshe and Yeshua. This is a unique matter. Rebbe Naftali was the friend of Rebbe Nassim. Both of them were born and grew up in Nemerov and were friends. They were masters of Torah and fear of God, servants of God. And also Rebbe Naftali was a miracle worker. Yes, Rebbe Naftali drew close to Rebbe earlier. So Rebbe Nassim felt that he himself was nothing. Rebbe Naftali drew close to Rebbe earlier. So Rebbe Nassim felt that he himself was nothing. Rebbe Nassim heard the Shalom Aleichem of Rebbe Naftali on Shabbos night, Shalom Aleichem of Rebbe Naftali, and he felt ashamed before Rebbe Naftali and annulled himself. What is this? Then he knew that Rebbe Naftali knew of Rebbeini and that this was a unique matter. He felt it. it also, and also, there was one from Nemerov who drew close to Rebbeini, Rebbe Lipa. He was also among the people of Rebbeini. Each one who merited to draw close to Rebbeini was an entirely unique matter. It was a large city and there were masters of Torah who learned there, not like today. They were servants of God and scholars. But the matter of Rabbeini is different, a unique matter, a secret from all the world. It is not what the Torah world is accustomed to, that there are tzaddikim, chassidim, scholars, and several types. There are two things in the world. There is the world, and there is Breslau. There is the world, and there is Rabbeini. Rabbeini is a unique matter. The matter of Rabbeini is not an ordinary affair. There are exceptional scholars, but this is another matter entirely. Rabbeinu saw what no other Siddiquim saw. He attained an awesome understanding from every, from every verse of the Torah, like the Gemara which interprets the verse that we interpreted and more. The Gemara interprets the Torah without the Gemara, we do not know anything. Do we know how to make sitzes? We know only from the Gemara, yes. I say, behold, I intend with the donning to fill in to fulfill the commandment of my Creator, who commanded us to don to fill in, and bind them for a sign on your hand. How do we know the details of carrying out the command? 
It is written in the verse, and bind them for a sign on your hand, and they will be a teitofos between your eyes. So perhaps tefillin should be made from gold or silver. There are many paragraphs in the Torah. How do we know that specifically these four are to be placed in the tefillin? Shema Yisrael. So the Gemara, the Siddiquim teach us. And we see that Rabbeini is a unique matter. We see that the world, even Brasil of Hasidim, they think that this is a type of Hasidism, a Hasidism, a type of Hasidism. They're not expert in the Gemara or the codifiers, so they think Lekut HaLochaz is insignificant. Lekut HaTfilaz is insignificant. Lekut Maran is insignificant. They're books of Hasidism, of Hasidism. But one needs to learn, to be a scholar and to learn the Gemara. But one needs to learn, to be a scholar and to learn the Gemara. Thus thinks the world. And we see also now, they honor the Rambam and say that Maybe they're saying in every translation, maybe the Rambam is a serious matter and Rabbeinu is nothing, chas But the truth is that there was never anything like Rabbeinu in the world. There is no tzaddik of the generation like him, no sage like him, and no one who speaks such words like those of Rabbeinu in his teachings and stories. They are annulled. We have the Torah and all the books of all the tzaddikim, and this is the root of all the Torah. This rises above everything. Through this we can come close to the Torah, to see the light of the Torah. In the Torah there are many forces. There is the elixir of life and the opposite. And through Rabbeini we merit to see the light of the Torah as is fitting. Rabbeini is a secret. We know nothing. What there is in the Kiti Alachas, on all the four books of the Shilchan Aruch, it illuminates all the Torah for our eyes, and the world does not know from this. Even if they would learn, they would not see. They are blind. They do not know the value of Lakite Alachas. They do a favor by learning. By learn, they do a favor by learning Lakite Alachas, as they learn from any other book. Thus, they learn Lakite Alachas. But thank God, there is already. Thus, they learn. They do a favor by learning Lakite Alachas, as they learn from any other book. Thus, they learn Lakite Alachas. But thank God, there is already Lakita Miran, and there is already Lakita Tfilis, and there is already Sepira Masias, and there is already dot dot dot, everything. There are very hidden matters in this. But now we are seeing that all the world, even the non-Jewish scholars in the, in the universities, they are very amazed by Rebbe Nachman of Breslev, even the non-Jews. I spoke with several people who know of this, from London, from England, and they speak about Rebbe Nachman of Breslev all the time, about his stories and his words, and we see that all the world is drawing itself to Rebbe Nachman of Breslev. There were many Siddiquim in the world, who was the Holy Baal Shantiv and his students, and many other Siddiquim, and they do not speak about them. As if there is only a single one in the world, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. Rabbi Yisrael is asked when the Mashiach will come. The Baini is already in the world. The Mashiach is already here. This is a matter that is very holy and entirely hidden. The Baini said that he is a secret from all the world, a secret. The world does not know. The Baini revealed such wonders that were never before in the world. There is nothing in the world like his teachings, like his wonders, like his wisdom. Just as he worked, at this with such self-sacrifice and he illumined the world with the light of the Mashiach the light that in the future now will illuminate the world through the righteous Mashiach just as he worked at this with such self-sacrifice and he illumined the world with the light of the Mashiach the light that in the future now will illuminate the world through the righteous Mashiach. And Rabbeinu says in the Sefer Amidus, the coming of the Mashiach is dependent on drawing close to the true tzaddikim. We see that this will bring the redemption, will bring the, coming of the, will bring the coming of the Mashiach. There are things that we do not grasp and do not see. Rabbeinu will sanctify and purify each member of Israel with such repentance. The Mashiach will already find everything ready and waiting. Rabbeini already prepared everything for the Mashiach. Rabbeini already prepared everything. The matter of Rabbeini is the printing, that his wisdom be spread throughout the world, that the time will come when they will accept. If the world would accept Rabbeini as the leader and know that he is the true leader, the world would already have been completely rectified long ago. The Mashiach would already have come, yes, 
it is all dependent on Rabbeini. And this we do not understand. It could be that when Rabbeini will be revealed, people with great minds will draw close. One person, it could be that when Rabbeini will be revealed, people with great minds will draw close. One person can draw millions to Rabbeini through his words. Then, everyone will already say, Oi, oi, na, 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 Then everyone will already say, Oi, oi, Nanach Nachmo Nachmo Miyuman. Everyone will abandon all the money and all the cravings. All the world is totally far. The distance of the world from the Torah, all the secular people and all the distant ones and all the sinners. It is all because of the concealment of Rabbeinu that the world does not know and does not want to know. They want the cravings, but the time will come when they will feel and know that it is all nothing. All the cravings and all the money is nothing. Vanity, the wicked and the heretics. They fell, they fell, and they see that they are nothing. Like the country of wealth in the story of the Master of Prayer. We see now that the whole world is drawing close to Rabbeini. They are, they are annulling themselves to him. The secular Jews should have distanced themselves from Rabbeini entirely. They should have wanted to nullify him. What? He says that wisdom is nothing. And languages are nothing, only Torah and prayer. And they see his discourses and his teachings. Even, even from their position, they feel and say, Oh, that master of prayer, there was never in the world such a sage, such a philosopher. And they see his discourses and his teachings, even from their position, they feel and say, Oh, that master of prayer, there was never in the world such a, such a sage, such a philosopher and they are completely annulled. Yes, they annul themselves. He makes them into dust, dust and ashes, as is Rabbeinu's life, with, as in the Rabbeinu's life with intellectuals and Ummah. They annul themselves absolutely. It was in the time of Rabbeinu that the Enlightenment and the Hirsi began, and they, were, and they were great figures in the world, great sages, and they had permission to see the Russian king when they wanted. There was one whose name was Hirsch Bear, Svidoy. He was their head, their Rebbe, and he was a great man. And they were such heretics that they could not bear a person who mentioned the name of God in his speech. They made a vow that the name of God would not issue from their lips. And when Rabbeinu came to Uman, and they lived in Uman, they heard he was a, he was, he was a grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, and that he was a great and wise man. So they said that they would send one of their intellectuals to Rabbeinu to see if there is someone there with whom to speak. Then that someone came to Rabbeinu and spoke with him and saw that all of them were mules, were mules compared to Rabbeinu. So he went and said to his friends, Oh, there is someone with whom to speak. We are all nothing compared to him. A sage like this, there is no other in, the, there is no other in all the world. Then they started to come to Rabbeinu and they spoke with him about their books, their investigations. Then they saw that Rabbeinu knew it all by heart and they annulled themselves entirely. The whole world knows this now. All the, distance, all the distant ones know this, that the intellectuals in Uman, Hirsch and his friends, they all annulled themselves to Rabbeini. Today this is known. Rabbeini traveled to Uman for several months before his passing, and they would come to Rabbeini. They were such wicked people, such heretics, and all of them became Baalei Shiva. And all of them became Balachiva. Before they came to Rabbeini, they had traveled to all the Siddiquim of their time. Perhaps there is someone who can extract them from the mud, from the apostasy. But they did not find one. They came to Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev and the other Hasidim, and they were not able to accept them, to speak to them. They did not find a connection, but Rabbeinu received them with a warm welcome, with, with such endearment, and they annulled themselves to Rabbeinu. Then Hirsch, Hirsch Bear and his friends, they had connections with the king of Russia, so they came to the king and said, You like sages, there is in, a, in, your, country such a, there is in your country such a sage that all of us are like mules compared to him, and you do not know of him. 
Then the king sent a letter to Rabbeinu, asking him to come and visit him. He wanted to be acquainted with Rabbeinu, but the letter reached him after the passing of Rabbeinu. And also we saw there were great and famous thinkers in the world, and they drew close to Rabbeinu and became the opposite. Fifty years ago there was Hillel Zeitlin, a man of the spirit, philosopher, poet and writer, one of the major personalities in Poland before the Second World War. World War. He was a heretic, as was Shazar, but afterwards he merited to see the words of Rabbeini, he merited to repent. He was a renowned speaker, and when he spoke, a large hall, able to hold thousands, was booked, and there was great demand. And when he spoke, he spoke only about Rabbeini. They called him the Orthodox One, and he had a Jewish son, and he had a Jewish son. This was in Poland in the time of Hitler. He had a great mind and was a philosopher and he fully repented toward the end of his life and was an Uman for Rosh Hashanah. And so with Martin Buber. He was not religious, but he suffered heart disease from not being religious. But he suffered heart disease from not being religious. And also, Shai Agnon. Shai Agnon annulled himself to me like a rag. I came to him to his house and he loved to hear about Rabbeinu and his followers that drew close to him, what they suffered. He was very mixed, Me'orav. He annulled himself and did not have concern about his honor. One time he was in Tel Aviv and I met him and he received me with such love, such joy, the likes of which I, the, like, the likes of which is never seen. There was such a bond between us. There was a famous lawyer in Russia, in Poland, a major person, a great mind, and he went to the market and heard a joyous commotion. Such joy, he thought it was a wedding. But he was amazed, for even at a wedding there is not such joy and arousal as this. Then he asked, What is this joy? Then he asked, What is the joy what is the joy about? Then he asked, What is the joy about? Then they said to him, that is the crazy breast of chassid. They dance. Then he entered the synagogue and he thought that the tables inside would be filled with bottles of alcohol. When he came into the synagogue, he did not see even one bottle. He saw that the chassids were sitting, learning and speaking about Rabbeini, and they were happy. Then he slowly, slowly became confused, and slowly, slowly he drew close to Rabbeini. And so with other great thinkers and writers, they all annulled themselves to Rabbeini. And also the drawing close of the world, the drawing close of the world to Rabbeini, it was not a reality 70 years ago. We see this. It is above nature. The world ought to have expelled Rabbeini from amongst them and their descendants. According to logic, they ought to have placed a ban of excommunication of the book on the books of Breslov. But what we know is that the books of Rabbeini are being printed and that the world can read them in synagogues and in every place and there is no prohibition against learning books of Rabbeini. This is a sign of the redemption. The main point is Rabbeini, Rabbi Nachman. He is the key to everything, to faith, to the Torah. He is the key. Without the key, it is impossible to enter. Locked. Impossible to enter. Rabbeini is the center and the basis of all Judaism, of each and every member of Israel. And also, he will rectify the whole world, even the non-Jews. It is such a wonder. If I were to say this, it would have... If I were to say this, it would not have any value. Who am I? What am I? But Rabbeini revealed a drop from the sea of his wondrous matter, which will transform the entire world. And Rabbi Yisrael published with self-sacrifice. For who? For who? People did not want to touch books of Breslau. They thought, Breslau books? There are many books of prayer. Why is Breslov needed? There's Reishis Chachma and there are other books. And also, one can live without the books of Breslov. And we see that the world is sinking every day more and more and more. And what will be? How is it possible to rectify? I saw with my own eyes. You are from this generation. You do not, you do not know what there was. I saw what this was. There was a time when it was forbidden to touch books of Breslov. It was hard for me to understand. How will the redemption come? And what will be? The world does not want to touch. The world does not want to touch books of Breslau. And how could Rabbeinu say, "I finished, and I will finish"? What did you finish? It is impossible to touch a book of Breslau. 
What did you finish? But now I see what he finished. He promised I finished and I will finish. And he triumphs over everything. He conquered the whole world. Now we see something above nature. It is, it is the complete opposite. So we can understand that the time will come when the whole world will draw close to Rabbeinu with such annulment that, that they, will cast, they will cast off everything. Only Rabbeinu. Yes, all the world are drawing themselves to Rabbeinu Rabbi Nachman. I see truly the opposite from what was. Rabbeinu already promised I finished and I will finish. So he will finish with us and with all the world. Yes, the time will come. If not for the controversy over the Baal Shem Tev, there would not have been a controversy over Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu would already have been revealed in the world, and what would have been, would have been. If the world would accept Rabbeinu, oh, it, would, it will be. Oh, dot, 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 it will be. The time will come. Rabbeinu said the Holy Baal Shem Tev was permitted to do miracles, and he did such wonders. There was a student who traveled with him and recounted what he saw with his own eyes. The revival of the dead and healing of the sick. And I am forbidden to do miracles. And I am forbidden to do miracles. And Rabbi Yisrael points his fingers at himself. If Rabbeinu had been permitted to do miracles, the whole world would draw close. The world has fallen into such darkness as we see, and Rabbeinu informed about this. But everything is prepared for the redemption. That will be revealed and ascend specifically out of a controversy like this. That will, that will be revealed and ascend. That will be revealed and descend specifically out of a controversy like this, concealment like this. The glory of God will increase more and more. These are wondrous matters that will be in the world. There will be such joy, everyone will recount all that happened to each one. There will be many stories, many stories from each and every one. All that I say, I do not say it out of humility. I was the worst. and the lowliest in the world in Tiberia. There are diamonds. One of them has a quality like this and another has a beauty like that. And all of them have, have a unique matter. And I was the worst. But I had such a point of wisdom that I merited to see and understand the truth. Where was the clear and pure truth? I did not look at this world, at renown and pride and importance and fame. To the contrary, this had no value for me. I valued only truth. So I was wiser than everyone. And also I chose Rabbeinu and Rabbi Yisrael Kardunar. Why Rabbi Yisrael? What is Rabbi Yisrael? There are many rabbis, but Rabbi Yisrael was unique in the world, wrestling. And I chose Rabbi Yisrael and abandoned the judge, the dying. The judge had been like a father to me. He taught me and drew me close and supported me and raised me up. So I could have thought, the judge says not to be abreast of chassid, so I need to listen to him. And I did not listen to him. That is a sign that I am wiser than the judge. That is a sign that I am wiser than the judge. The judge was a great thinker and scholar and an upright man with fear of heaven and wisdom. And the Yisrael bear was nothing like a fly, but that fly had such a force that he could stand against the whole world. We made a blessing every day. We make a blessing every day. Blessed are you who give strength to the weary. So I was a small insect. But they annulled themselves. I saw everyone also spoke about me. The Yisrael bear of Breslev. They themselves were odd. What? When one says Breslev. What? When one says Breslev. No. One time. This is the end of the matter. What? When one says Breslev. No. One time. That is the end of the matter. And they spoke and spoke and spoke. This is a sign that they had no peace. Breslev, Breslev, Breslev. Aye, 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 aye. A person like me, I had no importance, no worth. I did not have talents, nothing. But I had this matter that I abandoned the whole world, the judge and all the Tudor leaders. Even though I thought about myself, what is this? Who are you? What are you? 
Are you wiser than the judge? Are you wiser than the other rabbis who are so great? Yes, yes, I, Yisrael Bear. And yes, yes, I, Yisrael Bear. And Rebbeinu sent Rabbi Yisrael from Iran to Tiberia, to Tiberia for me. And what came of it, came of it. And also, my mother died in the house of Rabbi Yisrael on Shabbos. There was such pain. She died because I wanted to be abreast of a chassid. And if she had not been revived from the dead, Rabbi Yisrael would not have had a place in the world. Not in Svas, not in Tveria. All the community were angry. What is this? Bresla, they killed the mother of Yisrael Bear. He is a murderer. Murderers. God arranged that I and Rabbi Yisrael and other people who were present saw the revival of the dead. My mother died, as it is written about Sarah, that the angel told Sarah about Yitzchak. Avram came as close as a hair's breadth to slaughtering Yitzchak, but she thought that he was already dead, that he was already dead, that Avram had already slaughtered him, so her soul departed. We read after the Torah portion of the Akedah. We read after the Torah, after the Torah portion of the Akedah, and the years of Sarah, the passing away of Sarah, she died from the intensity of the grief. What Rabbeinu did with simple souls totally, totally far from the Torah, from Judaism. Materialistic people who did not know the scent of the Torah. When they drew close to Rabbeini, they became such holy tzaddikim as are not seen in this world. This is above nature. It is, no, it is a new matter. And King David in the Psalms, all the Psalms, Mizmor, 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 to David, Mizmor, the con, to the conductor, to David, Mizmor, Mizmor. There is Mizmor and there are several expressions of song. Mizmor, sing to God a new, a new song. King David spoke of a new song. It is completely new. A new song, new song, new song. King David, he is Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu surpassed all the Siddiquim, all the Siddiquim that were since the creation of the world. He is a wondrous, this is a wondrous matter that God saw what would be in the final generations, what blasphemy, what falsehood. According to what we are, it would have been fitting, God forbid, for such an apocalypse to come upon us without any hope. God have mercy, but God is merciful and compassionate. He knew that in the final generations it was mandatory that the soul of Rabbeinu Rabbi Nachman descend to this world. Thus, there is already no such thing as despair in the world at all. Only Rabbeinu. And Rabbeinu hints in the stories that the soul was brought to accept an oath that it would descend to this world. And then the devil came, the angel of death, the evil inclination. He had a complaint. There are legal statutes. What is this? Lawlessness? He said, what? If this soul descends to the world, I will not have anything left to do. And did you create me without purpose? Why did you create me? And he went. Afterwards they said to him, there were legal proceedings and we decided this soul must descend into the world. And you, find for yourself a solution. Then he went and thought of a solution. He came back and said, I already found a solution. He can descend. There will be such controversy. Oh, Rabbi Yisrael is asked, there will also be controversy against the Mashiach, or if the controversy will already have ended. No, no. On the Messiah, on the Mashiach, no. Already over. The controversy will be already over. In the book, it's written the signature of Rabbi Natoli, the friend and companion of Rabbi Nosson, in the book Chaim Aram. The holy writer, the small Naphtali, the holy writer, the small Naphtali, the son of my master and father, our Rebbe Aryele, may his creator protect and sustain him from Nemeroth.